Yeah, well, I'm a, a supporter of WikiLeaks and of Julian Assange's right to freedom. Uh, I'm here in Charlottesville, Virginia in the United States. I'm the director of an organization called World Beyond War, campaign coordinator of an organization called RootsAction.org. I'm an author of books and articles and, and so forth. And uh, I, I, what I oppose, what I spend my days trying to stop the United States government in particular and other governments from doing uh, is all done as a last resort. 67% uh, of the federal discretionary budget in the United States goes to war, goes to militarism, and, and every speck of it is done as a supposed last resort. Uh, so this is a, a meaningless and dangerous phrase, as is, of course, what hurts the country. I mean, there, there's no definition, there's no agreement on what hurts a country. Uh, and for people to be prosecuted for journalism on that basis uh, in violation of the, of the obvious facts blurted out by Giuliani uh, is incredibly frightening. I don't care if you agree with Julian Assange on anything. Uh, you know, this is, this is incredibly dangerous. Uh, and uh, as someone who who appreciates is incredibly grateful for what WikiLeaks has informed the world about. Uh, you know, I, I have double the reason to be worried about that sort of threat, but it, it really ought not to matter uh, whether you like what WikiLeaks has done or not. Uh, this is threatening uh, the, the, the institution of, of journalism. Uh, and I, I continue to believe that the U.S. government should be thanking WikiLeaks for the service of informing the U.S. public what the Democratic Party was up to. We're supposed to know. This is, you know, this is what actual democracy involves uh, and should be apologizing to the Russian government for blaming it without any proof that it was it that provided this service to the U.S. public. Um, I, I'm, I'm also interested, tell me when to shut up, but I'm, I'm also interested in, in the fact that you mentioned this court in Alexandria because it is about the least likely place in the world, perhaps outside of, uh, of an Israeli court for a Palestinian activist, that anybody's going to find justice for anything. Uh, and I sat through part of a trial of a uh, so-called trial of Jeffrey Sterling, a uh, guy from the CIA who was blamed, again, for providing the service of informing the U.S. public uh, that the CIA had been giving nuclear weapons parts, diagrams, plans uh, to Iran. Uh, you would think that something that insane, uh, the U.S. public ought to know uh, that its government was doing. Uh, and on the contrary, uh, when Jeffrey Sterling did, as he admits to inform the Congress, go through the proper channels and so forth, Congress didn't do a damn thing. Uh, when somebody informed a journalist who informed the public, uh, Jeffrey Sterling was put through a mockery of a trial uh, with Condoleezza Rice and the rest of them coming in uh, and very ineptly revealing new information that they, that they would have prosecuted anybody else for revealing in the course of the trial. So we can hope for that silver lining in future trials in that court, but sending a man to prison for providing a public service as a whistleblower. And of course, this is, this is, you know, the other part of the, of, of what they're after in going after journalists. They want to go after their whistleblowers too, uh, their sources too. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I hope that they're going to leave Julian Assange alone for the simple reason that that Russia Gate has largely drifted so far afield. Uh, that most of it has to do with, you know, Facebook ads and all this nonsense. And the question of of who gave the information to WikiLeaks has largely been dropped. Um, but I don't think we can can rely on that. Uh, I think. Those of us who who appreciate what WikiLeaks has done uh, and uh, want to stand up for the rights of, of every journalistic uh, institution and individual uh, need to increase our vigilance now, not to not let it slide. You said that um, you know that who how WikiLeaks got the documents is not is not so important anymore. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, they've never interviewed anybody from WikiLeaks, uh, Mueller's people. 
including Julian Assange. When they can get him, they know where he is. So he's not going anywhere. Uh, they're not interested in that aspect. Have you also raised an interesting question about um, the defense uh, in that courtroom? Uh, because unlike the UK, where there is a thing called the public interest defense, even a newspaper who publishes classified information could argue that was revealed for the interests of the public. You're not allowed to do that in the US. We had uh, Daniel Ellsberg on here a couple of weeks ago, and he was explaining how he was on this. When he was on the stand, he tried to give the motive for why he did it. His lawyer asked him under examination, and the judge immediately stopped him from doing that. I've seen that myself in other trials of so-called national security. So that would likely happen, of course, would happen in the case if Julian ever took the stand. He wouldn't be able to explain that. And that takes away the whole, any possibility of a, of a fair trial right there, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not a lawyer and others on this call can, can fill you in uh, much better, but I do know that on rare occasions, mostly in decades gone by, uh, activists who have gone and uh, hammered and poured blood on nuclear weapons and otherwise engaged in actual and symbolic sabotage of, of militarism have been permitted by the court to use that defense and the results have been dramatic and, and to the benefit of those activists. But on many occasions and increasingly, as far as I understand, uh, that defense is denied uh, and almost certainly would be denied to Julian Assange anywhere in the United States and to anyone uh, in that court in Alexandria. You know, it's interesting because I was thinking of a very trial that I uh, covered back in the early 90s up near in a place called Rome, New York, where indeed activists went into an Air Force base there and poured blood on B-52s and hammered it. And I was in the courtroom and the judge would not allow them to give any defense of life, any motive, uh, and they were oh. convicted. So uh, that's good to hear that it has happened before. You also just wanted to talk before we bring in uh, our next guest, and I hope you stick around or take part in the discussion, is that when you talked about the country, about it's not good for the country, it could hurt the country. What is the definition of, of the country, you think, that bar this attorney general nominee? Means? Is the country the public, as you mentioned, or a few people with a lot of power whose interests will be hurt? I think that's what he means by the country. The rulers of the country, right? <laughs> I think the best government speak, the best propaganda uh, is always ambiguous uh, so that it can mean one thing and be taken to mean something else. Uh, you know, support the troops means bomb a foreign country. Uh, hurt the country uh, is supposed to be heard by viewers as meaning hurt them. Uh, right. If it actually means anything at all, it means hurt the interests of the people making the decision. Uh, those right. prosecutors, those courts. Uh, and so it is it, it, it is good as propaganda. It is extremely dangerous as public policy. 